When I first moved to Berlin, I was most excited about this. Cheap, sustainable, and full of history. But the hoarding is showing up in my storeroom five years later. How have I ended up with a low-grade foot massager? And it's been three years since this mixer stopped working. We have so much stuff in Europe and create more e-waste per capita than any other region on Earth. One problem is when this stuff breaks, I have no idea what to do about it. But places like Berlin want to get one step ahead. As part of its sustainability initiatives, Berlin is working to fix a big gap in the circular economy. I'm convinced the markets will go for the repairable products. Berlin will give up to 200 euros per year to people who repair their own broken household items. And the EU hopes that such schemes will drastically reduce the waste produced here. And we also need the infrastructure to do that, like this massive refurbishment factory is trying to do. The big question is though, do schemes like this just leave us feeling good? Or do they actually do something that tackles so much waste? I dove into the DW archives for a visual history of Berlin and its wondrous second-hand markets. Post-World War II Berlin has always had a make-do approach. West Berlin was cut off by the wall and materials in the east were scarce. So many things were by default what we now call pre-owned or pre-loved. This second-hand mindset has more recently reared its head as resistance against blatant consumerism that has taken over large parts of the West. Berlin has around 40 weekly flea markets. Repair shops will teach you how to fix your bike. And some streets are strewn with tailors for old clothes. These are particularly appealing to me because I come from a country where waste is still relatively low and repair culture is thriving. I made another video about it. Nowadays, it's getting more and more complicated to get things done. That's René Repassi, a member of Germany's Social Democratic Party, who is working to push through policy change. He's talking about how the complexity of gadgets has gone up. Remember when you could just take the battery out of your old phone and replace it? We also now mix resources more with electronics now in our shoes, for example. And we need so much more raw material for our growing energy needs. René breaks down how the EU is pushing back. Hardware, there are certain coffee machine producers where you need a special key to open it in order to repair. And this key is either not available or expensive not allowed anymore. Contractual, if you go with your phone to somebody else to repair it, you lose your contractual guarantee, not allowed anymore. And the last thing that we introduced is we request from the member states to introduce support measures. So Austria, France, and a couple of states in Germany have now introduced a repair bonus, where you can get part of the repair paid for. A research group calculated savings from the scheme in the state of Thuringen from 2021 to 2023 and found that more than 30,000 subsidized repairs avoided almost 400 tons of electronic waste and almost 3,000 tons of carbon dioxide equivalent. More than a third of users said they would not have repaired their product if not for the cashback scheme. So many regions, including Berlin, are giving it a go too. The state here will now subsidize 50% of the repair cost for a long list of household items when you send your bills in and this is capped at 200 euros per year. This is all part of a new directive that the EU approved this year that each member state will write into law by 2026. It obliges companies to increase the minimum warranty period and lower the cost of spare parts. We have these examples that a part of a dishwasher, for example, a simple plastic part in a dishwasher, if you use 3D printing, it would cost you 50 cents. If you purchase it from the producer, you have to pay 200 euros. Nobody can explain this. This is ridiculous. Therefore, we included a rule that prices have to be reasonable. That consumers can request the check of the prices from judges. You can think of repair cafes. That the municipality offers um, um, free repair cafes where people can get help in order to get uh, the products being repaired. So to prompt the entire repair. And by that, we get a whole boost for the repair sector. Let's check it out. Berlin lists its registered repair cafes online. I'm heading to one that's set up inside a second-hand mall run by the city's waste management authority. The authority collects waste and preserves special things that they think deserve a longer life. This is actually how I drink beer. No, actually like this. And people donate things too. Ooh. It's so cheap. 
Hello. <laughs> no, I can't do it. <laughs> the repairer didn't want to be filmed because in true Berlin style, his anarchist group believes in the messaging over the individual. Ich habe eine alte Mixer Grinder, keine ja. Ahnung auf Deutsch, aber ja, es ist kaputt und ich möchte das reparieren. Also dieses Gummiteil hier unten, was jetzt drin ist, ist meiner Meinung nach auf keinen Fall so noch weiter zu verwenden. Wir müssen es aufmachen und müssen hier diesen, dieses Gummiteil neu holen. Wir müssen dieses, dieses Rad neu besorgen. Selbst 3D-Drucker übertragen die Kraft nicht, die wir da brauchen. Wenn der Eis crasht, ist das sofort auch wieder kaputt. Okay, ja. Ich helfe dir zu lernen, wie man repariert. Das ist mein Wunsch. Das ist mein ganz zentraler okay. Wunsch. Und warum ist das so wichtig für Sie? Wir müssen wirklich daran arbeiten, dass die Menschen über Reparatur und Nachhaltigkeit nachdenken. Mhm. Das ist das Prinzip, dass wir nur eine Erde und nur die und die Rohstoffe haben und Schluss. Und da können wir nicht so umgehen, wie wir damit umgehen. Wir werden es nicht schaffen, die großen Industrie, die Tech-Industrie oder sowas so zu beeinflussen. Wir können aber schaffen, dass unsere Kinder resilient gegen bestimmte Werbung werden, resilient gegen bestimmte Prinzipien werden und dann anfassen daran, dass es vernünftig läuft. I can't apply for the repair bonus yet, but when I come back with my new part next month, I will. I wonder though, what happens in places where people lack access to places or schemes like this? Does repair always make sense? One study compared the price of buying new versus repairing washing machines and vacuum cleaners. For such expensive products, it found that in every instance it was significantly cheaper to repair over replace until the very end of life, at which point the two switch. A group of European universities found that overall, while recycling has stolen the glory, repair is the most important pillar of the circular economy. You could save several times the energy required by repairing a household item rather than recycling it, which would include breaking down the device, separating its parts, changing their form, and sending each back into a stream of circulation. So repair infrastructure really needs to catch up. And to do that at scale, we need big players. We've driven across the border to Poland to visit one of the biggest factories in Europe that buys and refurbishes old things. Rebuy says they currently receive 1,500 packages a week through the post. Electronics, books, iPads, game consoles and watches. Look at that. Here, they check them for quality and sell them back for a longer warranty period than the original as part of their policy to make things last longer. Its CEO, Philip Gartner, says their customer base is growing as interest in a circular economy has picked up. The first aspect is, of course, um, simply expanding um, the lifetime of products by making it easy for people who don't need um, their used products anymore mm -hmm. um, to give them a second life, mm -hmm. trading it in and then um, giving a second uh, consumer the chance uh, to use it for uh, another two, three uh, mm -hmm. years. The really convincing argument about the, our business model is that price savings on the one hand and sustainability are not contradicting each other. Without the price being low, Gartner believes their model won't work, which aligns with Berlin's repair bonus idea, which he sees as the next big market. Over the past years, uh, we also um, expanded into the area of repair. Um, so we have our own repair facility um, where we do display changes, battery mm -hmm. changes, um, and other uh, repairs. Um, and that obviously has an additional impact on uh, saving uh, e-waste. And that's an additional area where we see um, quite some potential. batteries for, uh, for example. And do you ever mix and match the parts and make your own phone just for fun? Uh, we could do it, yes, but we never <laughs> do we have enough work to do. <laughs> it's still picking up and currently only very few phones get repaired in Europe every day. So I want to put this in perspective. Because while everything I've seen is inspiring in one direction, I'm still bombarded with ads like this. 
And at these prices and the convenience, can this more sustainable option even compete? Toys, books and more. The latest UN report on e-waste is bleak. It says e-waste is growing five times faster than the amount of electronics collected or sent for recycling, which is bad news for the environment and the billions of dollars worth of valuable resources that could be recovered and reused. So we are going to see a lot more of this until economic incentives like the one in Berlin, which have proved to work in some member states, really do tip over a large enough part of the population. And when industry truly catches up. I've had to borrow a friend's blender until the new part comes. But I will follow up in the comments. And don't forget to tell us your thoughts too. What do you think of schemes like this? Oh, and come back every Friday for more videos. Cheers!